There were a whole bunch of awesome announcements at Google I.O. 2019, but my personal favorite is definitely Firebase Performance for the web. Well, today, we're expanding performance monitoring to the web. This is a tool that can benefit any website that cares about performance, even if that site isn't already using other Firebase products. By simply adding a script tag to your site or including Firebase Perf in your JavaScript bundle, you'll get insights about how your web app performs out in the real world, in terms of initial page load performance and HTTP calls over the network. In today's video, we'll look at the basics of Firebase performance and take things a few steps further by implementing our own custom traces. And we'll look at some awesome upcoming features in Angular Fire to integrate with Angular and RxJS. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and make sure to download the mobile app on iOS or Android to take the Firebase performance quiz after you're done watching this video. Now, there's a few different ways we can use Firebase performance. The most basic way is to use it as just a standalone tool in an existing website. This approach will insert a lightweight script into your HTML document, and then you'll automatically get all kinds of performance reporting on the Firebase console. So this is a great option if you have an existing website and you want some performance reporting, but you don't want to use any other Firebase products. The next option is to use it in combination with Firebase hosting. If you're already using Firebase hosting, you can use these magic script tags to easily import it into your project but I think the vast majority of people will use it in combination with a module bundler like Webpack. That's how we're going to use it today in the context of an Angular application, but the process is very similar for all JavaScript frameworks. The first thing you wanna do is install the latest version of Firebase, making sure that it's version 6.0 or greater. Now, most of the code that we'll look at is relevant to any JavaScript app, but at the end of the video, we're going to look at some really cool new bleeding edge stuff from the Angular Fire library. At the time of this video, you can use it by installing Angular Fire with the next tag. From there, you'll want to go to the Firebase console and go to the settings tab, and you'll see an option to now add your app as a web app. You'll want to do this even if you have an existing app, because there's a new property that you need to have in your Firebase config in order to work with Firebase performance. That property is the app ID, which you can see down here at the bottom. Then if you go to the performance screen, you should see your web app there as an option. And keep in mind, it can take up to 24 hours for the data to populate, so don't be worried if you don't see any data after deploying initially. I was lucky enough to be able to test Firebase performance before it was officially released, so I have quite a bit of data built up here for Fireship IO. The actual data that you see on the dashboard is similar to what you would see on a Lighthouse performance score that you run locally in your Chrome browser, except this data is being collected and segmented across all your users in the real world. On the dashboard, I can see the aggregate performance for things like First Paint, First Contentful Paint, DOM Interactive, and how they're distributed across the entire user base. By looking at this distribution, I can see that the majority of my users are seeing page load times in less than two seconds, so that's pretty good. But I'm always pushing new code to my web app, so what if I do something that makes the performance decline? I can easily determine if my performance is getting better or worse by looking at the trend over time. Ideally, you want to see this chart have a negative slope because faster is always better. And on top of that, we can filter this data by region, by device, and even whether or not the user has a service worker installed. This allows us to figure out what users are being affected by a performance bottleneck and what the root cause might be. In addition to page loads, it will also keep track of HTTP calls over the network. So if you have some sort of async activity that's causing a performance bottleneck, you'll be able to find it here. Now, everything I've showed you so far will just work out of the box when you include Firebase performance in your app. But you can also write your own custom traces within your app's code, and that opens the door to all kinds of cool possibilities. For example, I have a custom trace here on a login modal that users click to log into the app, and this allows me to see exactly how long it takes a user on average to log into the app. But one thing I do want to point out at this point is that you should never use any personally identifiable information inside of a trace. Things like email addresses or phone numbers. Not only is that a bad practice for user privacy, but Google will flag it for automatic deletion anyway. We'll be writing our own custom traces in just a minute. And once you've collected some data, you'll have a screen that looks like this that you can filter by different attributes. You can even create your own custom attributes in your code. And you can also set up your own custom thresholds to signify a certain point that a metric would be considered poor performance. In my case, I've already gotten valuable insight from this trace because I found out that users on Safari take way longer to log in than users on Chrome or Firefox. And the reason I detected that is because Firebase is smart enough to warn me about it with this little orange icon here. So it'll automatically tell you when a certain segment seems out of the ordinary. And that's all based on real world data from Fireship. Let's go ahead and jump into the code and write our own custom traces. Back in our Angular app, we'll go into the app module and then set up the Firebase config, making sure that it contains the app ID. I've already included Firestore and Angular Fire Auth in here, and then we can go ahead and include the Angular Fire Performance module. This setup is specific to Angular, but the traces that we'll write next are framework agnostic. There's a lot of different use cases for Firebase performance depending on what you're interested in tracking. In the component, we'll go ahead and import Firebase from Firebase app and then initialize Firebase performance. 
On iOS and Android, FireProof will automatically track how long a screen has been opened, but we can also do that in a single page application by using the lifecycle hooks in the framework. Now the trace itself, you can think of like a stopwatch. You create an instance of a trace with a specific name, then you call start to start it and stop to end it. A simple trace will just keep track of the elapsed time, but we can also add custom attributes and metrics in between as we'll see later. So in this case here, we'll start our trace during ng on init, and then we'll end the trace during ng on destroy. And now we'll have an understanding of exactly how much time our users are spending on the login page. So that represents your most simple use case for a custom trace, but there's a whole lot we can do in between the start and stop point. Let's go ahead and add a custom trace into the auth logic itself, first by injecting Angular Fire auth into the constructor, and then we'll create an async function here called login. And this is the function that we would call after the user submits a form with their email and password. The first thing we'll do is create an instance of a trace called user login and start it. Then stop it at the end of the function and add a try catch block in between the start and stop point. What we'll try to do is log in the user with email and password. And if that's successful, then we'll want to put a custom attribute that will tell us whether or not the user has a verified email address. This example is kind of trivial, but attributes are just strings that allow you to segment your data in different ways. Setting really good attributes will result in really good performance reporting on the Firebase console. Now, if there's an error in the process, we can go in here to catch and we'll set a different attribute called error code that will allow us to segment by different error codes in the Firebase console as well. So if there's a certain browser quirk that makes it really hard for users to log in with email and password, we should be able to detect it with this trace and really just be able to see how smooth our login process is in general. So that's how you create custom attributes to segment the data, but you can also add your own custom metrics for reporting that would actually show up as numeric values on your performance reports. Let's imagine we have a function here that loads user data that makes multiple queries to different Firestore collections, and we want to know how long that query takes and also how many documents are read in the process. This time I'll be using Angular Fire directly, so this code's a little more specialized to Angular. But basically we're just reading a collection of items, but we don't know how many items are in that collection. After the read is complete, we'll call trace increment metric, and we'll set a metric as total size that will keep track of the total size of all reads that we perform in this function. But we can also create another metric that's just based on the size of the items collection only. If we want to do that, we can call trace put metric. And this will add a metric to this trace that doesn't really change over the life cycle of the trace. So increment metric is really useful when you have data that might change, like incrementing the score on a game or something like that. In our case here, we'll read from another collection called things. And then this time we'll use the total size of that collection to increment our total size metric. So if there were 10 documents in the first query and then 15 documents in the second query, our total value would be 25 for this particular trace. Now, I like this code for an async function, but if this were an observable, it means we would have to pipe in the tap operator all over the place to start and stop the trace. But thankfully, James Daniels, who's the lead maintainer of Angular Fire, has put in some work to make this a lot easier especially for Angular RxJS developers. If you're working in Angular, you're much more likely to be reading collections in the context of an observable. Your most basic use case would just be to pipe in this performance trace operator and then give it a name, and that will automatically give you the latency of a collection read. You don't even need to call start or stop because it automatically knows to do that when you subscribe to the observable. In this case, it will automatically stop the trace when the observable emits data, but there's also several more operators in there that allow you to handle more advanced use cases. My favorite is trace until. This allows you to set up a trace, but only stop the trace when a certain condition has been met. For example, say you have a game running, and then you're making multiple updates to that document based on the state of the game. Once the game over property is set to true, then it ends the trace here. And then there's also a third option for trace options that allow you to do things like set attributes and metrics like we did before. So overall, this is a very promising update for Angular Fire, but more importantly, Firebase performance is pretty much a no-brainer for every app. It's free, easy to set up, lightweight, and it will help you catch problems that you didn't even know existed. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want even more content, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. And don't forget to take the quiz on the Fireship mobile app to see if you learned anything. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.